To those with ears to hear, libraries are really very noisy places. On their shelves, we hear the captured voices of the centuries-old conversation that makes up our civilization. It's been said that the shared character of a community can be read like a book by looking at its public library. Here in Davenport, a legacy of library support has brought us to a crossroads, to a place between what we have and what we need, to a time for branching out. Branching Out is an initiative to better serve our community with two new branch libraries. Growing populations in the west and north central areas of Davenport have created the need, and the Branching Out plan will provide the answer. These branches will allow us to provide a community center for our, our customers. It's going to allow a place for people to come. It's going to allow a place for us to share programming. It's going to allow a place for people to gather and think about ideas and work through information access, either through technology or through the printed format. But it's going to be a place, I think, that people will really enjoy. As we look to the future, we also pay tribute to the past. The Branching Out Plan is the next step in a proud heritage of innovation, growth, and service stretching back over 165 years. With the establishment of the Cary Library Association in 1839, the first public library in Davenport was born. Its humble collection housed in a reading room in the LeClaire Hotel. The first few decades brought growing pains in the form of several relocations, reorganizations, even names, finally coming to be called the Young Men's Library Association. In July of 1877, Clarissa Cook, widow of financier and philanthropist Ebenezer Cook, donated $10,000 for the construction of a library building. In November, the cornerstone was laid for the Cook Memorial Building at the corner of 6th and Main. Once completed, the library boasted nearly 7,500 volumes. Financial challenges continued to beleaguer the fledgling organization. Space limitations and the need for funds led the Library Association to approach an Eastern industrialist who was just starting a career in founding libraries, Andrew Carnegie. Thanks to a donation of $75,000, along with the passing of a city tax for support, the Carnegie Library opened in 1904. Situated on the southeast corner of 4th and Main, it was at that time the largest Carnegie Library west of the Mississippi. For the next 60 years, the library expanded services to all parts of Davenport through deposit collections in schools, storefronts, and small branch libraries. But by the 1960s, it was increasingly evident that the Carnegie Building was too small and ill-suited to the needs of a modern library. A children's wing was built in 1963, but its construction disturbed the loose base sand float upon which the Carnegie Building had been built. The resulting sinkage caused dangerous instability in the walls of the Carnegie. The building was vacated and demolished in 1966. Once again uprooted by the winds of change, the library found a temporary home in Hill's department store at the corner of 2nd and Harrison. The current Davenport Public Library building opened in 1968. Spearheaded by C.D. Waterman, Jr., the building was designed by internationally known architect Edward Durrell Stone, also the designer of Washington, D.C.'s Kennedy Center. The library's interior features a large, unobstructed main floor, topped with an open mezzanine. An integrated wing houses the children's collection. In 1978, a central Davenport branch was opened on the grounds of the Annie Wittenmeyer complex. The branch occupies a portion of the administration building and features a popular reading collection, a high-quality children's collection, and homework resources. Although a welcome addition in 1978, the Annie Wittenmeyer branch is now cramped and in need of replacement. In fact, when established, it was intended only as a temporary measure, but in reality, has served for more than 25 years. Up until now, the last financial milestones in Davenport's public library system came in 1989 and 1999. In 1989, an endowment campaign raised $700,000 to be permanently invested, with the interest used to maintain and enhance the collection. In 1999, $1 million was donated for the Special Collections Endowment, with most of the gift from Alice Richardson and Ted Sloan. 
Today, the Davenport Public Library is a dynamic and vibrant part of the community. Once focused strictly on the circulation of books, it has grown to provide an even more significant and diverse connection to the citizens of Davenport. Partnerships with area organizations such as the Quad City Symphony, Iowa State Extension Service Master Gardeners, the Red Cross, Quad City Arts, and the River Music Experience, and many more, provide programs, classes, clubs, and events. Outreach efforts served homebound readers, senior living facilities, and citizens with sight disabilities. Internet access is available to everyone, along with electronic catalog search linking patrons to over 30 local libraries. Programs designed for seniors, adults, teens, and children offer learning opportunities for all ages. The Davenport Public Library webpage offers 24-7 access to the catalog event calendar, book news, research, even full-text online books. And still, it's not enough. With the main library in downtown Davenport and just one overcrowded and inadequate branch, there's so much more to be done. So, we're branching out for the future. Two new branch libraries will serve the west and north central areas of Davenport. Based on a 2002 study, the Library Board of Trustees selected sites for the new facilities. One on North Fairmont Street, the other on 54th Street, west of Eastern Avenue. In 2003, a referendum passed to provide operating funds at the new branches. The City of Davenport has committed a portion of the funds for construction, and the remainder will be raised through a community capital campaign. The benefits of adding these new branches are nearly innumerable. Each branch will have approximately 26,000 square feet on one level. In addition to the on-site collection, these new facilities will offer children's and teen areas, study rooms, leisure reading areas, meeting rooms, a cafe, internet access, free parking, even a drive-up window. Through these neighborhood branches, the Davenport Library System will branch out to thousands of residents, providing increased access to electronic and printed information, helping teens and young adults entering the job market, improve information literacy, stimulating and increasing our children's ability to learn, making space available to meet the needs of the activities and programs of community organizations, expanding computer access and training for people of all ages, and above all, nurturing a lifelong delight in reading. Together with the main library in downtown Davenport, these two branches will comprise a library system worthy of its mission to connect a diverse community to resources that inform, enrich, educate, and entertain. A library is much more than brick and mortar. It is the physical manifestation of a community's quest for wisdom, a center for the gathering of information, the joy of learning, the enjoyment of culture, a repository of the greatest minds of the past and present, and fertile ground for the ones of the future. A place that sees no differences in race, age, gender, religion, politics, or economic class. A place that anyone can come to again and again, and always be welcome. Hello, I'm Greg Glengren. Together with the friends of the Davenport Public Library, we are extremely excited to be a part of what will be an important legacy for our community. We hope you share our enthusiasm about our branching out project and hope that you'll be a part of it too. Visit the library's website for more information on branching out. Contributions can be made to this address or call us to discuss how you can be of help. Your support will touch the lives of countless thousands of people for decades to come. Within the walls of a library rests the soul of the community it serves. For a great man once wrote, there's not such a cradle of democracy upon the earth as the free public library. This republic of letters where neither rank office nor wealth receives the slightest consideration.